Hi, it's Alistair from Electric Scotland. Do my weekly newsletter, my introduction to it. Um, it's for 7th of June 2019. Okay, uh, I got some news in from Beth Gay, which I put at the top of the newsletter. It says, Hi, Alistair. Learned this afternoon that the Blairsville GA Scottish Highland Games, set for June the 8th, 2019, have been cancelled because the weather forecast is for heavy rain um, uh, of the for the coming weekend and throughout the next week. So she says, thank them for doing this. Such a shame to try to hold games in the pouring rain. So if you're looking to go or attend, uh, apparently they've advised all the clan tents, uh, people that would have clan tents and, and the various sponsors and stuff uh, about this. But obviously members of the public could just be planning to go and obviously turn up and it's not on so at least they're trying to get the word out and we are helping a wee bit so there you go um, uh, I've been following the uh, the new uh, potential elections for the, uh, uh, the, the the new leader of the Conservative Party and hence the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and uh, so far I'm kind of liking uh, Boris Johnson and also Esther McVeigh. Uh, I put a little bit of information up on both. Uh, I think Boris Johnson's uh, launch video. And there's a wee article on Esther McVeigh and CapEx. I will say on LBC uh, there was, I did see a, a, a video uh, of her being interviewed. So... I tried to find it, but couldn't find it again, unfortunately. But if you have a chance to look, you might find it. But she seems to have some good ideas, and so I, I quite like her thoughts. Um, and of course, we got the Peterborough election, which is the polls have now closed. So we should hear in the next three hours or so, uh, three or four hours, the result of that. And, Obviously, a lot of us are hoping the Brexit party will win, and that will be the first MP ever in Westminster. But obviously, it's going to be really interesting to see what percentage the various parties got in the polls. And of course, all the leaders of the uh, uh, of the for the the Tory leadership all turned up there. But um, so we'll, we'll we'll see what goes. We'll see what goes. Anyway, on to the news stories I've got for you this week. Well, obviously, one of the big stories was um, Donald Trump's visit to the UK. And by all accounts, it went very well indeed. And a lot of people have written to lots of very positive stories. Quite naturally, there's been some nasty stuff going on. But on the whole, we didn't really see any of that on the, on the news or anything. Unless the, the media had a different agenda, in which case they went deliberately to those places. But... Certainly the number of people that turned out against him was way down from his last visit, so I think most people are beginning to accept he's actually doing not a bad job. So that's good news. Okay, so anyway, the, the stories that I've got for you is, first one is Nigel Farage is the one figure in British politics who has learnt from his mistakes. This is an article from... Um, uh, CapEx uh, says the Brexit Party's core message resonates mainly because it is true. Um, next story is why I'm backing Esther McVeigh. It's another CapEx story. It says Esther McVeigh is a straight talker who understands working class people. Uh, the next story is the tax rises forecast. Uh, as Scotland faces a one billion spending black hole. It says Scotland is facing a one billion pound spending black hole in the coming years, with a stark warning that it could lead to fresh austerity or tax hikes. So certainly people in Scotland need to know about that. Uh, next one is Scotland's best buildings revealed at Nation's Architectural Oscars, Dundee's v &A Museum, the transformation of a 200-year-old observatory in Edinburgh into an art gallery, 
the rebirth of a Charles Rennie Macintosh design tea room in Glasgow and a futuristic new whisky attraction in Speyside have been named among Scotland's 10 best designs. So you might like to want to have a wee read of that and see the pictures of the places. Uh, this one intrigued me, how Okedo is beating Amazon and plans to take over the world. It says the UK company is building a moonshot factory that will take it beyond groceries. Actually, I, I was really interested in that story. I, I hope you'll have a reread of that. It's uh, quite amazing what they're getting up to. <coughs> the next story is the economic opportunities of Brexit. <coughs> <coughs> says Sir John Redwood tells Brexit facts ah, for you or readers how Brexit can make us better off. And here's one that I think all Americans should read. 30 Reasons Why We Welcome You, Mr. President. It's from Conservative Women, a must read for every American and anyone else that's interested in Donald Trump. But uh, frankly, um, I always thought he was doing very well for America. But these 30 reasons, uh, I had hardly heard of any of them at all. Quite amazed. That's why I'm thinking that maybe uh, Americans should have a wee read at that. Oh yeah, and Johnson's launch video. This is uh, Boris Johnson. So uh, this was his launch video, which you might want to... See, because you might just end up being the new Prime Minister. The next story is huge Edinburgh Airport site goes up for sale. A mixed-use development next to Edinburgh's International Airport, which could provide office space for more than 20,000 workers or housing for 6,000 people, has been brought to market. So if you're interested in developing things and um, looking to buy some land, uh, this looks like it's a good bet. Um, next story is SNP government under fire over Westminster tax in flagship economy paper. Says the Fraser of Allender Institute also hits out at the lack of analysis and forward planning in Derek McKay's medium-term financial strategy, which was set out uh, last week. Basically, blaming Westminster for everything, you know, and taking no real account of Scotland's real finances and not coming up with any decent uh, plans. You know, frankly, it's a waste of time. Oh yeah, another one, the Mummy Diaries. I've decided I'd highlight this. This comes from um, Think Scotland, and it's it's every two weeks it tends to come out. Um, it's Two Babies, Week 50, by Emma Hargan. Uh, basically, she's got a little boy and a little girl, and uh, uh, basically they're obviously uh, growing up, and, and she's getting in touch with them, and they're going through potty training and all kinds of interesting things. And uh, I must confess, I've been reading it, uh, each issue that's come out, I've been quite enjoying reading it. It's been quite... A, an interesting experience and because I, I'm not married, don't have any kids or anything like that, I've never had to go through any of this stuff and I'm just pretty amazed that <clears throat> just goes to show I think parents are amazing people, what they have to go through to bring up the kids. But um, there's a lot of uh, past uh, ones so if you, if you like this one and you want to read some of the older ones uh, they are available to read on the site. So I've given you a link to that. Um, no deal, more most popular Brexit choice with farmers, says report. Since more than a quarter of farmers are backing the UK to leave the EU without a transitional uh, arrangement, making it the most popular Brexit conclusion, according to a new survey of 200 farm businesses. I thought I'd highlight that because a lot of people quote farming as people that might suffer from Brexit, so it's, it's obviously a bit of a counter to that. Um, yeah, President Trump's state visit was a personal success. Overall, this was a successful visit for President Trump. Back home, 
he would have looked presidential ahead of the election next year. In the United Kingdom, President Trump highlighted the importance of the special relationship. And I've been giving you some uh, videos and bits and pieces of that within, within the uh, our, uh, LetterScotland.org site, but this comes from Think Scotland. Okay, so that's basically the news stories I picked for you this week. Under Electric Canadian, we're continuing with the Canadian Horticulturalist. I think this is the penultimate volume that I've got. This is volume 29, 1906. I found another copy of the Wentworth Historical Society, uh, volume 4. Um, and then I've got one which is Travels in the Interior in, in Inhabited Parts of North America. Um, and the years 1791 and 1792, which has given an account of the manners and customs of the Indians and the present-day war between them and the federal states. The mode of life and system of farming among the new settlers of both Canada's, New York, New England, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, interspersed with anecdotes of people, observations on the soil, natural uh, productions and political situations of these countries. It's by Patrick Campbell in 1793. I remember this book and I thought I'd put it up, but I can't find it on my site for love nor money. So I've, I'm convinced I've got it somewhere, but my site searches you won't find it. So I put it up again. Um, but certainly I thought that was really interesting. I think that's the one where I, um, <clears throat> I think I've mentioned it once before, I was going through a little village and, and, and the snow was coming down, but the women were out there in their bare feet uh, washing clothes in, in in buckets and they were stamping stamping them you know so you say god these women are tough and also the wee story there where, which was saying that he's interviewing a farmer's wife and she says it's lovely over here she says the only thing that would make it like home is to get some heather you don't by any chance have some heather or know where some is <laughs> so anyway it's a nice wee stories in there so i hope you'll enjoy her read that um the Historical Overview of Canadian Agriculture. It's one of the publications of the 1996 Census of Agriculture series of, of products. So uh, it's kind of interesting, that one, because agriculture is big in Canada. Then, by every means possible, despite receiving less recognition than the Army, Canada's Navy and Air Force were crucial to the success of the D-Day invasion. It's obviously we've been celebrating the D-Day invasion uh, on the television, there's a lot of stuff going on and I thought I'd pick a couple of wee uh, items and this is my contribution for Canada. Um, and then the final story of the lecture kidding was a souvenir of Hamilton. This is a wee book about Hamilton in Ontario with lots of wee pictures from the, from the olden days. Okay, they're on to Electric Scotland. Uh, One Humane Society, it's by Martin McIntyre. It's an interesting concept to consider, and you can read uh, his contribution uh, at a link I've provided for you, because I've created it as a PDF file. Uh, the Collected Writings of Lord Selkirk. I've got volume one up. <clears throat> So it's kind of interesting, that one. Uh, History of the West Indies and also the British Empire in America. Both of those are put up on our Commonwealth page, but it's, uh, it's, it, it's really, uh, it's like the History of the West Indies is comprising British Guyana, uh, Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, uh, D Dominica, uh, Montserrat, uh, Antigua, St. Christopher's, Jamaica, Honduras, Trinidad, Tobago, Grenada, the Bahamas and the Virgin Isles, etc, etc. It's by Robert Montgomery Martin and it was produced in 1837. It's in two volumes. So, uh, and also the British Empire in America is uh, containing the history of the discovery, 
settlement, progress and present state of the British colonies on the continent and islands of America. And that's also in two volumes, being an account of the country, soil, climate, product and trade of them. And it's by J. Um, Oldman and it was produced in 1741. That's one of the oldest books I've come across. So hopefully you might enjoy both of those. Um, and here, Heroes and Heroic Deeds of the Great War by Donald A. McKenzie. And then The Story of a Doctor's Telephone and the Physician's Wife. It's by Ellen M. Feinbach. Uh, basically, I was, um, I, I was doing a search and I came across this with the, the Doctor's Telephone. I thought, Doctor's Telephone? I said, that sounds an interesting book. Uh, I didn't think it had anything to do with Scotland, but saying it didn't in actual fact. But I, I double clicked it and brought it down, just had a wee read and I ended up reading the whole thing. I really enjoyed it actually. It was a fascinating insight into a, a rural doctor's life basically in the olden days. And I noticed that she'd written another book called The Physician's Wife. And so I thought I would, uh, <coughs> I thought I'd bring them both down and off you to, for you to read. Um, and, and, and hopefully you might like to read it then, this light-hearted reading. Then a state visit of Trump to the UK, this is where I've given you a link to the forum I've done in the community, uh, so I can put up a few videos of uh, Donald Trump coming. It's actually more basically they came from the, uh, the, the Royal Family uh, video channel on YouTube. Then Stanley uh, Brody QC invites attention to something which is often overlooked. It says the actual wording of Article 50 of the Treaty on European Union, which regulates the departure of member states from the EU. So if you read that, he's suggesting we've actually left. So, and he's quite a, he's a very senior um, barrister, you know, so I mean, he's, uh, he, he should be taken seriously. Then I've got Scottish Rivers, it's by Sir Thomas Dick Lauder. Um, so I've added a link to his book from the foot of his page um, about Sir Thomas Dick Lauder. Uh, and then I've got a memoir of Lord Haddo, said in his later years, it's the fifth Earl of Aberdeen. Sent it by the Reverend E. B. Elliot, M.A., and it's the sixth edition. I don't think anything with the third edition or over must be really popular, and this is the sixth edition, uh, 1866. So I thought, well, you know, you might well be interested in this guy, because obviously at the time a lot of people were. Then I've got Irving of Bon Shaw. Basically, I've, got, I've added quite a bit to our Scottish families this, this particular week. So I've added a link to our Irving of Bonshaw community forum and our Irving page because um, basically I hadn't put a link to it so I've now done that because I think if you go to our Irving page it, you should be able to go to the forum where there's some additional information up now. Then I've got Maitland of Lethington very this two volume publication to our Maitland page. I might add when I was searching for Maitland, I came across a wee an old novel published in 1857 called Lizzie Maitland, which I thought I'd share with you as I found it while looking for Maitland on our site search engine. And so I thought it was quite a nice wee book and I thought you might like to reread it out, so I did that. Then I've got Lieutenant John Gordon of the Dundarkus family, who's massacred at Patna in 1763. It's by G.M. Bullock and C.O. Skelton. It's published in 1907. Um, so I, again, I, that was quite interesting. And then I also got historical memoirs of the house and clan of Macintosh and of the clan Chatham. It's by, it's by Alexander Macintosh Shaw produced in 1880. So I hope you might like to read that for those of you who are in the clan channel, the Macintosh clan. 
But even if you're not, these are always interesting books. And then I've got Memorials of John Mackintosh by the late Norman MacLeod. Um, and it says it's from the 20th edition, but just in 1878. Well, you know, if it's the 20th edition, that's got to be massively popular over the many years, you know, so I uh, think you should have a read at that. Okay, so that's what I got for Electric Scotland. And then finally the story. Uh, this is a story I'll be adding to the site next week. I thought I'd give you the first few pages for you to kind of whet your appetite, as it were. Uh, it's the Memorials of Peter Smith. Basically, uh, he was born in the city of Brechin, Forfarshire in Scotland, and eventually ended his days in America, where his brother went first. And you'll read about how he got on after his brother left for America, and how he had quite a struggle to get by in the early days. And I, th I think the description is pretty amazing, because you know if you look how he, he went from Brechin to to Glasgow, and just in documenting his trip there. It's quite a job for a young guy, young guy, you know, so. Anyway, uh, the story takes about half the newsletter this time, but I thought you might like to read about his early days and how people struggled in Scotland to make do, especially when things were happening on the continent that changed things in Scotland. So there you go. That's what I've got for you this week. So lots of interesting stuff around there. Hopefully it's a wide enough spread that every one of you will find something interesting to read. Okay, so let's keep our fingers crossed for the Brexit vote in the Peterborough by-election and I'll bring you the story next week. Okay, thanks for listening and as always, love to hear you from you. Thanks.